Welcome back. Um, if you are following along in your own copy of the book, we are starting off on page 159. All right, here we go. Dear Jordan, without you, I am empty. The goal with no net. Seems my life was broken, shattered, like puzzle pieces on the court. I can no longer fit. Can you help me heal? Run with me, slash with me, like we used to? Like two stars stealing sun, like two brothers burning up together. P.S. I'm sorry. I don't know if he read my letter, but this morning on the bus to school when I said, Vondi, your head is so big, you don't have a forehead, you have a five head. I could feel JB laughing a little. No pizza and fries. The spinach and tofu salad mom packed for my lunch today is cruel, but not as cruel as the evil look Miss Sweet Tea shoots me from across the cafeteria. Even Vondi has a girlfriend now. She wants to be a doctor one day. She's a candy striper and a cheerleader and a talker with skinny legs and a butt as big as Vermont, which according to her has the best tomatoes, which she claims comes in all colors, even purple, which she tells me is her favorite color, which I already know because of her hair. This is still better than having no girlfriend at all, which is what I have now. Uh-oh. While I'm on the phone with Bondi talking about my chances of playing in another game this season, I hear panting coming from mom and dad's room, but we don't own a dog. I run into dad's room to see what all the noise is and find him kneeling on the floor, rubbing a towel in the rug. It reeks of vomit. You threw up, dad? I ask. Must have been something I ate. He sits up on the bed, holds his chest like he's pledging allegiance, only there's no flag. You all ready to eat? He mutters. Are you okay, dad? I ask. He nods and shows me a letter he's reading. Dad, was that you coughing? I've got great news, filthy. What is it? I ask. I got a coaching offer at a nearby college starting next month. A job? What about the house? What about mom? What about me and JP? Who's going to shoot free throws with us every night? I ask. Filthy, you and JB are getting older, more mature. You'll manage, he says. And what's with the switch? First you want me to get a job, now you don't? What's up, filthy? Dad... Mom thinks you should take it easy for your health, right? I mean, didn't you make a million dollars playing basketball? You don't really need to work. Filthy. What I need is to get back on the court. That's what your dad needs. I prefer to be called Josh, Dad, not Filthy. Oh, really, Filthy? He laughs. I'm serious, Dad. Please don't call me that name anymore. Are you going to take the job, Dad? Son... I miss swish. I miss the smell of orange leather. I miss eating up cats who think they can run with the man. The court is my kitchen. Son, I miss being the top chef. So yeah, I'm going to take it. If your mother lets me. Well, I will talk to her about this job thing since it means so much to you. But you know, she's really worried about you, Dad. Phil, I mean, Josh, okay, you talk to her. He laughs. And maybe in return, Dad, you can talk to her about letting me back on the team for the playoffs. I feel like I'm letting my teammates down. You let your family down too, Josh, he replies, still holding his chest. So what should I do, Dad? I ask. Well, right now, you should go set the dinner table, Mom says, standing at the door, watching Dad with eyes full of panic. Behind closed doors. We decided, no more basketball, Chuck, Mom yells. Baby, it's not ball, it's coaching, Dad tells her. It is still stress. You don't need to be on the court. The doctor said it's fine. What doctor? When did you go to the doctor? I go a couple times a week. Dr. WebMD. Are you serious? This is not some joke, Charles. Going online is not going to save your life. Truth is, I've had enough of this talk about me being sick. So have I. I'm scheduling an appointment for you. Fine. I shouldn't be so worried about your heart. It's your head that's crazy. Crazy for you, little mama. Stop that. I said, stop. It's time for dinner, Chuck. Who's the man? And then there's silence. So I go set the dinner table because when they stop talking, I know what that means. Ugh. The girl who stole my brother is her new name. 
She's no longer sweet. Bitter is her taste. Even worse, she asks for seconds of vegetable lasagna, which makes mom smile because JB and I can't get with this whole better eating thing, and we never ask for seconds. Until tonight, when JB, still grinning and cheesing for some invisible camera that Miss Bitter Sweet Tea holds, asks for more salad, which makes dad laugh and prompts mom to ask, how did you two meet? Surprisingly, JB is a motor mouth, giving us all the details about that first time in the cafeteria. So she came into the lunchroom, it was her first day at her school, and we just started talking about all kinds of stuff. And she said she played basketball at her last school. And then Vani was like, JB, she's hot. And I was like, yeah, she is kind of polka tutinous. And for the first time in 15 days, JB looks at me for a split second. And I almost see the hint of a smile. Things I learn at dinner. She went to Nike Hoops Camp for girls. Her favorite player is Skylar Diggins. She can name each of the 2010 NBA champion Lakers. Her dad went to college with Shaquille O'Neal. She knows how to do a crossover. Her AAU team won a championship. She's got game. Her parents are divorced. She's going to visit her mom next week for Christmas break. She lives with her dad. She shoots hoop at the rec to relax. Her mom doesn't want her playing basketball. Her dad's coming to our game tomorrow to see JB play. She's sorry I won't be playing. Her mom is as sweet as mom's carrot cake. She smells like sugar plum. She has a sister in college. Her sister goes to Duke. Dishes. When the last plate is scrubbed, the leftovers put up, and the floor is swept clean, Mom comes into the kitchen. When is Dad's doctor appointment? I ask. Josh, you know I don't like you eavesdropping. I get it from you, Mom, I say, and she laughs, because she knows I'm not saying nothing but the truth. It's next week. School's out next week. Maybe I can go with you to the doctor? Maybe, she says. I put the broom down, wrap my arms around her, and tell her thank you for loving us and Dad and letting us play basketball and being the best mother in the world. Keep this up, she says, and you'll be back on the court in no time. Does that mean I can play in tomorrow's playoff game? I ask. Don't press your luck, son. It's going to take more than a hug. Now help me dry these dishes. Coaches talk before the game. Tonight, I decide to sit on the bench with the team during the game instead of the bleachers with Dad and Mom, who's sitting next to him, just in case he decides to act churlish again. Coach says, We've won 10 games in a row. The difference between a winning streak and a losing streak is one game. Now, Josh is not with us again, so somebody's going to have to step up in the low post. I sit back down on the bench and watch JB lead our Wildcats to the court. When the game finally starts, I glance up at Mom and Dad, but they're not there. When I look back at the court, JB is staring at me like we've both just seen another ghost. Josh's play-by-play. -play. The team's in trouble if they don't find an answer soon. Our championship dreams are over. Down by three, they're playing like kittens, not wildcats. With less than a minute to go, Vonnie brings the ball up the court. Will he go inside for a quick two or get the ball to JB for the three ball? He passes the ball to number 29 on the right wing and tries to dribble out, but the defense is suffocating. They're on him like black on midnight. He shoots it over to JB, who looks up at the clock. He's going to let it get as close as possible. They've got to miss me right now. Vonnie comes over, sets a high pick. JB's open. He's going to take the three. It's up. That's a good looking ball there, but not enough. It clings out the rim, the buzzer rings, and the Wildcats lose the first half.